Hi there! It's uh, time for another battle. It's the year 275 BC and we are close by to a city named Beneventum or actually it's not called Beneventum yet, it's called Maleventum um, during this year and was changed some years after this by the Romans to Beneventum. Um, this actually means something like, well, if we, if we start from the current name or the contemporary name for this year, Maleventum, it meant like bad air or bad uh, wind or something like that. And Beneventum is the opposite, it's a good air or good wind. But I think there's also a symbolic uh, meaning to this, meaning uh, like good fortune or good luck or good omen. Um, so this is, should be called the Battle of uh, Maleventum 275 BC. And this is the last battle uh, featured in this booklet from the Pyrrhic Wars. And um, we are back in Italy, or actually the, the last battle we played, Asculum, was also in Italy. And that was the year 279, but as I uh, think I mentioned that in the last video or the last session, that after the Battle of Asculum, uh, Pyrrhus chose to march with Sicily to aid his Greek uh, allies there uh, to fight the Carthaginians, and so he did. So he has been there for three or four years and <coughs> uh, almost conquered uh, the whole of Sicily during that campaign, uh, but there was some trouble as well. Uh, he couldn't really. He, he was laying siege to uh, an important uh, Carthaginian uh, port city named Lilibaeum, and he couldn't really take it because uh, he couldn't just uh, starve it out because of the port. So the Carthaginians got uh, supplies sh shipped in all the time. So, they were not in a, uh, basically they were not uh, threatened by getting conquered there at any point. So, Pyrrhus, uh, uh, well, he thought if we're going to take uh, Lilibaeum, we need to have a fleet and also siege it from the sea, or blockade that port at least, and um, um, for that he of course needed a lot of ships and he needed a lot of crew. Um, and he didn't really get that many volunteers from the from the Greek allies on Sicily that he that he hoped for. So um, he started to do some more or less uh, uh, well started to draft troops. Uh, um, I don't know if he did that by force, but he he did in a way that the uh, Greeks didn't like at least. So he the relations between Pyrrhus and the other Greek cities in, in on Sicily uh, deteriorated by this and uh, uh, I wouldn't say they became enemies but uh, the relations uh, got very very bad and eventually of course Lilibaeum could not be taken by, because of that and eventually Pyrrhus had no other choice than to march out of Sicily again uh, and enter mainland uh, Italy uh, once again. So that he did and was thinking of marching back towards uh, Rome again. So he started moving uh, northwards and well the scenario historical background says that when he went came to Italy um, his reputation brought thousands of new recruits uh, out to join him. I also read that that was actually not the fact because um, the people here were very disappointed uh, of Pyrrhus because he left then back in 279 after the Battle of Asculum and after that time Rome has really expanded again they have put hard press on the Samnites who were kind of left alone and the Tarentines and so forth so they were not too happy but on the other hand for Pyrrhus to be able to march against Rome again with a, to meet the legions in battle, he must have had a big army, right? So, and this note says he has about 20,000 infantry, th uh, 3,000 cavalry and 20 elephants with him. So 
20,000 infantry, this means there must have been a lot of allies with him uh, during this time. So, <clears throat> uh, because this is basically uh, a legion with, uh, or, or more or less a consular army with allies included, that is, is it as large as one of those? So, and actually the um, the Tatus army that he's meeting in this battle is also of 20,000 men. So, so pretty evenly matched armies here. So, what I wanted to say is that Pyrrhus had a pretty large army again. So he probably the Samnites and and Italiots and other, I mean, Brutians maybe and uh, Lucanians. They had no other choice than join them again and. Maybe with joint forces they could beat Rome once and for all, but <clears throat> well, that's of course a difficult task to do. Anyway, he marched nor northwards against Rome and he got news about uh, a Roman force camping close to Maleventum or Beneventum eventually, and uh, he also learned that that force. Um, would be reinforced, or they will actually join up with another force that would be maybe a big, uh, a too big bite for Pyrrhus to attack. So he thought, okay, we need to quick march and do a surprise attack against that camp before um, the Romans can join forces and be, you know, maybe double strength or something than they are here, here right now. So that he did. The problem was he need to. Uh, to reach the place where the Roman camp was uh, established, he needed to uh, march his force uh, through a big wooded areas, thick woods, and there were no good roads there, only trails. So many of his uh, troops got, uh, you know, scattered. They got lost, and so yeah, a lot of stragglers. So. Uh, this was uh, thought to be an, an uh, you know a night attack, an early dawn attack. So by dawn, there were stragglers here and there, and the Pyrrhus' forces were joining uh, as time went by. And the Romans did see that. I mean, they they came and uh, avant guard out of the woods here, checking the situation. So the Romans uh, thought, all right, we need to uh, take the opportunity here to attack before. The guys can array their whole army into an assault. So they did attacked and was quite successful, uh, driving the um, Epirot um, advance advance guard to towards their own lines. However, they were then pressed back by big help from the elephants, uh, twenty of them, uh, drove the Romans back to the camp again. Uh, and by that, uh, the Epirot army had somewhat, uh, well, they have, they have somewhat been able to array themselves into a battle line and started the attack against the camp. But, uh, well, I can also mention that there's not really not much known about the battle itself. But one thing that's uh, mentioned here is that when the uh, Epirot army attacked, uh, the Romans concentrated on uh, throwing javelins and, and other missiles against the elephants and actually they were able to get them to panic so uh, the elephants rushed, rushed through their own lines, the, the phalanxes here and caused a lot of uh, confusion and also losses so that was explained as one of the reasons that Pyrrhus actually lost this battle, because his army came in disarray and they lost heart when they saw the elephants running away through their own lines, uh, ripping up big lanes, of course, there. Um, so they panicked and more or less retreated from here. So Pyrrhus took his army, he went back to Tarentum actually, and from there he left Italy uh, and, and sailed back to Epirus. So yeah, that's a quick recap of what happens from the little known about this battle, because there's really not uh, uh, much known about the losses, uh, and I don't really sure how 
where these numbers come from that is in the historical background but uh, the only thing we know about the losses or at least what I have read is that the Romans managed to capture uh, quite a few of these elephants uh, from Pyrrhus' army. Um, yeah, so that's that's basically it. Um, so I think, uh, yeah, by this we are ready to check out the War Council. Um, so this is, yeah, so this is actually the one scenario where the Romans actually were victorious against Pyrrhus. So the War Council, uh, leader Pyrrhus, uh, he got five command cards and they will move first. Uh, the Roman army, uh, this is, says it's led by consuls Stechius and Sulpicius, but uh, that's not true, right? I think this is a um, copy and paste error when they did this booklet, because this should be Dentatus, uh, who's the commander here. And I suspect if you look at this previous battle, we have the same consuls here. Uh, some three, four, four years before this, so I think they have just pasted it here, and, and well, whatever. It something went wrong, wrong here. Anyway, the Romans get uh, five command cards as well, so it's an even match there. And the battle will rage on till one till one get f seven banners. And there's actually no special rules here, but there are some terrain here, as you can see. So um, let's check out the game board and do a quick recap of the uh, the terrain rules because first of all we have the woods I was talking about where the forest where the Epirot army emerged from against the camp located here at the Roman baseline so woods uh, if you move there you need to stop you cannot battle unless you're a light or a warrior not light cavalry though uh, and it's two in and out in close combat. I think if you uh, do missile combat against the woods, you only get one die. Uh, and the terrain over here at the Roman uh, side, we have the ramparts, where you get, well, in close combat, you, mm, let's see, yeah, you can ignore one sword symbol and one flag. And uh, for missile combat, you can ignore one flag. And then we have these uh, uh, camp hexes or fortified camps, more or less the same, with the difference that uh, when you battle out in close combat from here, you only uh, you get one die less than you would otherwise get. Also, these uh, block line of sight, these don't. So that's basically it, and. I'm not sure about the movement rules actually for these, if you need to stop when you cross one of these. Uh, I'm gonna check that out before we start, but uh, I think there was something that you need to stop when you go through the hex side where the rampart is. So, um, for the armies then, well, let's check out the Epirot army first. So, I can start back there actually this time, because there we are seeing the phalanxes led by Pyrrhus himself uh, arraying their phalanx for the battle. They have two medium heavy infantry in front of them, probably other Italian phalanx hoplite type units. And then we have the 20 elephants there. Um, on the right hand side, we have a skirmish uh, section here. So we have two light infantry there and there, and we have a bow in the center, and they're backed up by a light cavalry unit back there. Uh, on the left-hand side, we have the main cavalry force. So we have two medium-heavy uh, cavalry led by one leader, uh, a nameless one, by the way, and then we have uh, a light cavalry uh, in front of them here. We also have a light infantry uh, skirmisher here and as you can see here we have two warrior units so probably some Italian tribe uh, warriors there Samnites uh, is a good bet but not only that I guess we have Brutians and Lucanians there as well and I'm a bit unsure you know when this scenario starts is it when the avant-garde 
is uh, approaching the Roman line and they do the attack or is this actually after that when the Romans have been pushed back again and the Epirot army is uh, planning for the main assault. I'm not really sure about that but it might be that this is actually from the very beginning so we have the avant-garde kind of coming here this is uh, you know uh, the main army a bit uh, further away <coughs> trying to ray and come out of the woods to <coughs> to get into the battle so that would imply maybe that the Romans were actually in the attack here now but of course we, we might see another uh, flow there than in history anyway two warrior units there and that uh, completes the, the Epirot army on the Roman side well we have a pretty standard looking army with a few exceptions so in front on the ramparts we have the main line of medium heavy infantry so that would be Hastati and uh, Principes or Principes if you want and in front of them we have the Velites, three units of them and they are flanked by an auxiliary unit so some allied, allied units on the flanks here on the right hand side back at the ba baseline we have two uh, medium heavy cavalry so that would be the legionary cavalry there and on the camp and the rampart of the fort itself we have uh, two units of medium heavy infantry and we have two units of heavy so this would be the triarii and here's uh, Dentatus himself but uh, what is a bit unusual is these two uh, war machines here so we have heavy war machine uh, units uh, two of them on the ramparts and these fellows have you know this impressive range of six maybe you remember that from uh, the Axartes river battle when Alexander was crossing these guys uh, on the Greek variant of these <laughs> that they were actually catapults they fired uh, at those light cavalry holding that uh, uh, river river bank there so um, these are pretty cool actually um, so two of them and that's basically it so in the number of units we have actually 17 units on both sides the Romans have um, has an advantage in that they have three leaders Epirot army only two but otherwise um, well, 17 units and quite a mix of them. It's really hard to say who has the edge. It depends on how, how your playstyle would be, I guess. And by that I think we could uh, mention a few word about some words about some, some battle plan here. So uh, for the Epirot army, well, <clears throat> of course, I think the only way to win this is to assault because otherwise we will just be hacked to pieces by this war machine so we need to go forward attack but I don't think we want to attack immediately we want to get the main force up and hopefully we don't even have to commit our warriors before the main line has uh, come up here so we can attack with ho the whole force here uh, at the same time that would be nice um, in the meantime while waiting for the main line to assemble here close to the camp we should do some skirmishing attacks on this flank maybe some cavalry harassment and then sh charges in here against the roman cavalry and their lighter type infantry here uh, that's what we're hoping for and in the, also in the meantime do some skirmishing we have good skirmish troops here so we could uh, we could cause some losses here while waiting for the main army to appear here on the field for the romans then well um, i can see two possible paths here so one is, you know, go for the attack before the main line of the Epirotes can assemble. That would be one thing to do. I mean, we could hit whatever we have here in the front line and we would be heavier uh, from the beginning against those guys. So that would be really nice. There's a danger though in this uh, cavalry flank because the Epirotes are stronger. But if we could re reinforce that flank with some infantry and also get the war machines to fight against or fire against those uh, uh, cavalry we could win this battle uh, on this flank as well um, 
that's one thing. Uh, because the other thing is to stay here and wait for the egg rolls to come. There is a danger. I mean, it's a bit more convenient, I guess. We can just wait here and and uh, fight in in reinforced uh, uh, hexes here by these ramparts. <clears throat> the bad thing is though, we are on the baseline, so we can't really retreat uh, from here. On the other hand, all these hexes gives an additional. Uh, you, can, you know, you can ignore one flag while standing on these hexes, and if you're not being a cavalry, of course. So, uh, and if you're also supported, and we could get the leaders to the flanks, I think this could be a really solid line here. More or less impossible to force you to retreat from here. So we could just fight here from the walls, but maybe it's not that easy to to pull through that plan. I don't know really. But somehow I feel that could be a bit more convenient. And while waiting for the April to come, we just pour in what we can from the war machines, from the Velites, and maybe also commit some allies so we can throw some javelins over there, be ready for a cavalry fight over here. And sooner or later they have to come and then we fight on the on the barricades here. But uh, I'm not really sure if if that's a, the plan to to go with. So the Romans had two option, options as I see it, and I will a bit depending on what cards we get, I will uh, forge the plan after that. But I think I'll start as an initial plan to more or less wait here and do some skirmishing and fire out from here and. And hopefully when they reach us they are they are a bit decimated by our war machines and skirmishes and we can uh, we can get them in a maybe in a I mean we could do a counter assault uh, out from here if we are feeling stronger and of course always nice if you can get that elephant and they can maybe also do some trampling things there on the enemy side so that's it so I think we are ready to start by that and um, Let's see, yeah, it's the Epirots who start the game. So let's start with bringing up uh, A and B here. Okay, we have a double time and a light troops. I think two nice cards for the Epirots. Uh, of course, the double time would be nice to have in a later uh, stage of the battle, but on the other hand, if we could do the double time pretty early, we could um, get up our reserve line pretty quick here, at least four of them. Uh, of course another thing would be to do a crazy attack with the warriors. They could attack some isolated uh, legionary units here. I mean these guys are not supported so you know that guy could rush in with three hexes with a double time I guess. Yep, warriors may move three hexes the card says. So that warrior unit could actually hit here already from the beginning. And if we force those guys to retreat we can attack again. Uh, we, I know we are sacrificing our warriors, but it's kind of what they're the purpose of those guys. They just need to hit first and hit hard and then they just fight till the end and then <laughs> uh, preparing the ground for the heavier troops to come. And those guys could also reach someone here. Uh, well, these guys are of course supported, but uh, yeah, that could be something. Anyway, we don't know what cards we'll get yet, so let's roll first of all. Okay, it's a CD, so we won't be able to play any of those two cards anyway. So let's see, C is an inspired right leadership. Then we have another order light troops and two units center. So. I'm thinking of maybe doing the light troops now because then we could start with some initial skirmishing here. I mean, we can order up to five of them, so we can, um, you know, make some room for the main line to assemble here by moving away some of the lighter. So let's see. Let's go heavy on this flank. One, two, three, four, and let's also start some skirmishing over here. 
So, let's see. I go there with that light. And then these guys could move here. I think I'll leave the bow unit there. And then light cavalry goes all the way to the flank. Like that. And those guys stay. So, time for some battle. Let's start with throwing our javelins against that Velite unit there. Two dice. They are uh, not supported, so a flag would also start bringing losses for those guys. And the flag we got indeed. That's good. So they need to retreat two hexes. They can only go one and then they're blocked. So we need to take one of the Velite blocks away here. Good throwing of javelins there. And... Well, who should we start with these times? I mean, if those guys would scare those uh, Velites away, then we don't have any target for the um, bow unit there. I'll take my chances. So I'll start with the one die attack here. And this time I'm not hoping for a flag. No, this was the optimal result, a green one. Yes, so we got another Velite and the good thing is, even though these guys are done, we still have at least one fire coming at that same unit. So now comes the bow fire, it's two dice. But that was a complete miss though, so no arrows hitting effectively here. Let's continue with that one at the same target, so it's one die. And that's another green. So those Velites are really badly hit now. Then we got the light cavalry, they only have one target so they will attack those uh, auxiliaries there. That's a leader symbol so that's a miss. So that starts the action here and I'd say it's a fairly good uh, skirmishing happening there. Three Velitens blocks are removed already. So, and then it's the Romans. Ah, let's uh, bring up their card slots one uh, A and B first. So we have a first strike, interesting. And then we have inspired center leadership. Okay. Let's see what we get. D or E. So we're going to reveal these two. That's an order light troops. We could retaliate. And here's a two unit center. Okay. So we could order five light troops and we want to do that because now it's time for the retaliation. So here we can throw with full effect some uh, javelins over here as well. Let's bring those back into action. That's one, two, three, four. We can even order one more. That would be those guys. They cannot reach anyone to throw the javelins yet, though. So I'm thinking maybe I should even... I should leave those guys. I'm not gonna march forward with them. They're kind of good screen against uh, the enemy cavalry there, so they cannot hit our cavalry. So I leave those guys. I will only order four units this time. So those guys will stay. Those guys will stay. These I want to move. And uh, let's see, those lights are out of support there so I'll move them here and these guys will move here because if those guys run away we still can hit that light cavalry there that's good enough so let's start on the right hand flank and we start with those Velites attacking that light trying to revenge the losses they got but they missed that's a sword symbol so I think I'll choose the same target with the other Velite unit and that's another miss then we have this flank which could be a bit more interesting perhaps uh, let's start with throwing javelins against the light cavalry there we hoping to scare them away pretty far away <laughs> hopefully we'll roll a double flag that would be something 
Uh, well, we got a hit at least. And for cavalry, that uh, we know one hit is pretty much because they're only three blocks. Good javelin throwing, and we're also gonna see if we can get the other threat uh, reduced somewhat. Two dice, another hit. So quite in intense uh, skirmishing here in the beginning of the battle. Uh, three losses there and two to the epigrotes. Very interesting. So this was the card, the light units. Oops, and I dropped a card, just a second. All right, so I'm also gonna remember we had the first strike on the Romans here. So it's time for the Epirotes again then. A, B, C. So double time, light troops or inspired right leadership. We don't have any leaders on the right hand side right now. Uh, but I'm thinking maybe, I mean, we are still in the skirmish phase of the battle, right? So let's go with the lights again. We're gonna, I mean, now we have plenty of troops in positions. Those guys, those guys, those guys, those guys. And let's take those guys. Uh, I'm even considering to, instead of those guys, take the light cavalry there. Yeah, that we want to do. So, let's start over here again. Because there will be no movement at all this time. Nope. So let's start here. Two dice against those Velites. A flag. Luckily for them, they can retreat two hexes. One, two. Then we have those light infantry who already caused some damage over here. They are now throwing the javelins again since the Velites came back. Uh, this time we missed them though. That's bad because now they are in range. And then we take the bow unit. They will attack the same Velite unit who dare to stay there. They're gonna pay for that. Nope. That was a double leader symbol. Nothing. Uh, I'll take the same one from here. Let's hope we hit them now. Yeah, one hit. So they're now down to one block. So this is serious. Uh, and then we had the light cavalry attacking that same uh, auxiliary there. This time we got a flag, but they are supported and they choose to stay here. They feel strong. All right. But well, we got one one more block in the losses from here, and we forced uh, those velites back who threatened our cavalry there. All right, it's the Epirotes again. No, it's the Romans. A or B. First strike or inspired center leadership. So it will be the center leadership. And uh, the leader plus four adjacent. We only have one leader, so that will be these guys. So which four do we want to order? I think we're gonna do it like this. One, two, three, and four. Because I now want to open a lane for my uh, my um, heavy artillery here. So these guys will move, and these guys will move towards the center. The Velites will stay, and these guys will stay. So I have some fine, and of course this Triari with uh, the Tatus himself will stay here. So the skirmish fight here continues. So now the Velites are retaliating, and this time they manage to hit. So the first loss on the Epirote Light Infantry here. So this is a pretty cool duel happening here. And then we have the Heavy Artillery. It's a two dice attack and we are in range, right? One, two, three, four, five. We could fire even six hexes. So it's two dice against that light cavalry. 
but we missed them. But that's a dangerous place to stay because these kind these guys could just pour in these heavy uh, bolts or whatever they are firing here. <coughs> okay, to replace the card and let's go to the Epirotes. It's an A, B, C. Okay, double time, three center or inspired right leadership. Hmm. And the double time is only foot units, yes. Okay. So either we should do the warrior attack I was talking about. Uh, there's no ranged combat here. Well, that's kind of a waste doing that, I guess. I'm thinking we could... Or otherwise I order just three units center. And... Continue with the skirmishing for some more. Should we do that? Yes, I think I want to do that because there's also another thing I want to do. So I'm going to play the three in the center here. Uh, so I will activate once again these skirmishers and also the elephant this time because I now want to get them uh, out of the way from the infantry actually. So let's see. I don't want to get them in the line of fire of any war machines though. Let's just check the range. One, two, three, four, five, six. So they could hit here potentially if they got the line of sight, but I still gonna move the elephants there. This is a good place to be, I think. We can activate them easily because they are on the dot line, and then uh, we are still protected from any enemy fire here. And the light infantry will not move at all because they want to engage in the skirmish duel they are having, and these guys see the opportunity to destroy one of the Romans now. So. Here comes two more uh, dice of a javelin attack, and we hit them. We hit them again, so here this Velity unit goes down, and we got the first Epirot banner. They are pretty happy with that, I'm sure of that. And then we have another one, the other duel going on there. And you know what, this is another hit, so... Also, this uh, Velice unit loses one of the blocks. So we actually have six uh, Velice unit or blocks in the dead pile now. Really intense uh, skirmish fighting going on here. Um, yeah, let's play the Romans also. A or B. First strike or move fire move, which it will be, of course. It's the move fire move. Let's see. Order light foot and light mounted units less or equal to command. That means five. Then move fire move again. We can move. Uh, we can move through friendly units as well. Okay. So yeah, we're gonna try to get some skirm good skirmishing in here. Um, do I want to do anything with those auxiliaries? I think I want to more or less fire with those guys and then move them away because they are starting to get weak now. On the other hand, I, want, I don't want to be in a way here. That's not good. I want to have the lane of fire open there. Hmm, so where should I put them? If 
we go there, fire, and then I can move back. Okay, let's let's take those guys as well. So they will just more march forward one. They are not interested in any battle right now. These guys will move up there. These guys will stay. Or would I? No, I'm gonna move actually because I want to move away again then. Uh, but these guys will stay and just fire. Okay, that's it. So let's start here this time and I will again fire against that light uh, cavalry. And that's a flag and that's nice because now we push them back really hard. One, two, three and four. Over here those guys throw the javelins but they, since they're moving they only throw one. But that's enough, it's a hit. So this is a bitter fight here. Um, these guys same target, one die. That's a miss though. And now we can move again, actually with these guys as well, but I'll stay here. I have a good, oops, I have my guys in range and I'm a bit more strong than the enemy there, so I'm happy with that. But here I want to get away, so I go here. These guys just stay as a screen here and these guys back one step. Just to be in range here, but not in range of that cavalry. So that's it. Um, so the Romans are getting a better out of it, I'd say, so far, even though the Apirots had the first banner. Uh, I, I don't know, I, I have the feeling that Romans have good control of their lines, while these guys are a bit shattered. Maybe I'm wrong there. Uh, looking at the losses, it's pretty even. Uh, six for the Romans and four for the Epirotes, but well, we have a nicer line here in my <laughs> as I see it in some way. But well, let's see. I'm thinking actually of you know ending the session here. Well, let's replace the card first at least, and uh, let's see what happens next because still we haven't seen the main uh, force of the Epirotes start marching yet except from that uh, elephant unit. So this whole first part was really only skirmishing. Some uh, skirmishing and and some, uh, you know, uh, moving, moving with other troops. By the way, I'm gonna do one change more because uh, I had a, you know, these guys stayed, was there and I have a still one movement to do and I want to keep the lane of fire open for that uh, that guy so I was actually thinking of moving these guys too that was my plan uh, so I will do that so I still can fire out here in that direction okay that's it that's the last thing for today and uh, um, yeah thank you for watching and hope you will be back for part two the battle of Beneventum or Maleventum bye bye <laughs>